This video will contain a lot of spoilers, so if you haven't watched the first episode of The Witcher on Netflix, don't watch, I mean, pause the video and watch it later, please, but you know what I mean. Hey, noble ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking, and today we're talking about The Witcher on Netflix. So this video is dedicated to the first episode. Let's go. So right off the bat, I'd like to say that I'm happy with this production. So I really like the games. I had a high expectation for this show, and so far, I've got to say, I'm pretty happy with it. The actor that they chose, I think they did a good job. He looks the part, although I've got to say that I would have preferred if the armor that he's wearing, the gear that he's wearing, looked a bit more like the actual video game, and that is because it's coming from a fan of the series. I don't know if it changes later on in the series, but right now, it looks like he's wearing complete leather armor with some studs or perhaps he's got some plates underneath and the studs that we see are actual the rivets of some sort of brigandine I doubt it to be honest I think it's just studded leather armor so the overall geometric shape of it kind is resemblant of the uh, of the game and the, the sort of gear that the witcher wears in the game but you know the witcher wears mail a um, bit of a special kind of mail which looks like it's riveted on top of a le sort of leather foundation I don't mind that it's specific to the Witcher and I wish that they did that but apart from that on this video we're going to talk about two things mainly first the battle second the market duel first and foremost I'd like to thank them thank all the gods thank every possible entity deity in the history of mankind for not having boob armor worn by the Queen thank you so much I mean not that the armor looks particularly good but it's a fantasy setting so that's okay they can get away with armor that looks a little silly it doesn't matter it's fantasy I mean in this place they use magic they create magical walls invisible walls I'm not going to complain about the practical looks of the armor however I am so happy that they didn't go with the classic fantasy trope of female armor looking like boobs thank you so much because I mean Joan of Arc teaches female armor in history looked exactly like male armor she's a warrior queen obviously so she goes to battle together with her husband and they both wear armor real armor you don't wear it directly in contact with your skin you wear it over certain layers of material it can be male underneath it can be an army in doublet and other layers of textile armor and regular clothing as well so you would not need boob armor anyways that's out of the way what about the battle I enjoyed it overall but there was there were some things that kind of made me cringe for example why the heck are foot soldiers charging at night that are charging at them I mean just you know history teaches if cavalry charges you don't want to charge back because they're gonna win if you were the general there what you want is making sure your men have a shield wall and hope that their morale and training sustains the cavalry charge but you know the idea of just running towards a charging cavalry is extremely stupid I like the fact that the king and the queen are wearing helmets but for some reasons at one point the king loses his helmet now how the heck did that happen we don't know I can understand it could happen I suppose in the middle of the havoc that a medieval battle would have been but now you've got a king who does not have a shield and has his head completely unprotected and we know the reason why they did it they did it because they want us to see the the guy in the face and the king should have servants someone a knight removing his helmet and give it to the king I mean a king with no head protection is very suicidal spoiler alert the king gets killed obviously and where do they hit him in the freaking eye with a quirrel or bolt a crossbow and I think I kind of like this character that we still don't know much about this mysterious hitman this crazy medieval equivalent of a high terrain sniper with a crossbow who freaking headshots everyone I could have justified it if the king had a magical ring that protected him somehow but since obviously he doesn't what was he thinking anyways the queen for whatever reason was not expecting her helmetless husband to die and then we don't actually see it but we understand she gets wounded again another thing I hated is again uh, everyone is wearing plates and yet they slice through plate like it was butter they pierce plate like it was butter occasionally you see them cutting people's throats which for whatever reason they don't have anything I mean they've got a helmet they've got breastplate armor but in this movie for whatever reason they tend to leave throats unprotected people can just cut your throat anyways but I'm gonna get mad about people penetrating 
pirouette rating played like it was nothing. I'm okay with the Witcher pulling off spinning moves and pirouetting and doing crazy things because I mean he's the freaking Witcher. He's not even human. He's got superhuman strength, superhuman dexterity. I'm not going to complain about that. But what I complain is when I see normal people. So these are just regular soldiers, regular humans, no magic involved. And we don't see, they don't have like in Warhammer a battle mage who is casting a spell that enhances the power of their weapons and therefore they can go through armor. I would be okay with that. But these people, they're just using regular steel and they go through, guess what? steal and it's stupid even in a fantasy setting because if for whatever reason in this world weapons were made of a material that can penetrate armor then people would stop wearing armor they would come up with something else all of that money invested into arming such a big army with full plate when it's absolutely pointless and useless makes absolutely no sense in any setting whether it be realistic or fantasy we even see a, ma a man splitting a freaking helmet in two i mean what's the point of wearing the helmet if it's oh gosh these things drive me nuts anyways let's move to the market jewel uh, the market jewel is interesting because i mean it, again we see a lot of dancing we see a lot of dancing and, and you know that we complain about this but with the witcher i'm not too mad about it because we know that the witcher does a lot of pirouetting in the game so what did they have to choose i mean we need to put ourselves in the shoes of these people the the, the filmmakers and I'm, I'm saying this also as a little reply to a uh, scalagrim's video which i really enjoyed and uh, and I think he got a lot of a lot of negative comments and I don't think he deserved them because he did make a point he knows that this is fantasy he's just nitpicking for the sake of it for the fun of it and to allow people to learn a thing or two about realistic sword fighting so he knows that the witcher is a fantasy setting he got a lot of people telling him how oh, you don't even know that this is fantasy yeah of course he does but i'd like to say that the fact that the witcher turns his back a lot we need to put ourselves in the shoes of the filmmakers what choice do they have this is how the video games show the witcher fight and as far as i understand we know that the witcher fights like this like very flashy in the books as well so it's either they make it realistic so the witcher stops spinning around but then everyone is not all the fans are gonna be like that's not how the witcher fights or they they have him spinning around like a ballerina and they are therefore faithful to what the video games show and what we are used to seeing the video games and the fans will be happy honestly they had no choice they had to make him spin like crazy so i'm gonna defend a bit their choice in this case they had no choice luckily the choreography looks really good it's good to see and i have heard people saying that it could make sense because the witch fights monsters he doesn't fight humans so he needs these pirouettes to increase the power of his blows to go through the tough skin of the monsters that he fights and I'm not sure how plausible such an explanation is but then again he's the witch I suppose with his extreme dexterity for him doing a pirouette it's nothing literally so the way i look at it is like the when when the witcher fights humans he plays with them like a cat plays with his prey because the witcher is superior to any human and the movie did show that he's butchered everyone in the market and interestingly enough when he fights when he's in in trouble um fighting at the very beginning of the movie he's finding that huge monster he actually doesn't finish him off with a very choreographic pirouette or spinning or jump or whatever he actually thrusts him so it in a way, I think, the way I see it is that the Witcher is so proficient and so superior to general humans that he can literally pull off whatever the heck he wants during a fight and perhaps he even uses it to confuse his enemies because they're like, what the hell is he doing? So I don't have any problem with him doing it, but I do have problems when regular humans do it. Now, the girl that he's fighting is no regular human. We know that. But is she as strong and dexterous as the Witcher is? Yes, she manages to parry a few of his moves. She manages to go through his defense a couple of times. So the girl is skilled. But still, sometimes some of the pirouettes are so exaggerated and continuous that for me, it's over a 
exaggerated in her case. I would rather prefer to see witches fight like this and other people, whether it be humans or non-human, just fight in another way, fight differently. So that's the part I, I want to criticize a bit. She spins too much and in fact she ends up dead. Now given in plot reasons probably she wanted him to kill her. So again I'm not complaining too much. There is a plot behind it, there are situations behind it but don't overuse the spinning, that's all I'm saying. Give it to him, make it the sp special way of fighting of this specific kind of warriors who are in fact superhuman. But believe me you don't need every single person who wields a sort of spin. Reverse grip, and the reverse grip is what I don't like. And uh, Scalagrim spoke about it, if you have an arming sword or a long sword you just it's just stupid. Yes, you can still say he is doing it to show off, he's doing it to may, maybe even break the morale of the people he's fighting because they might see that and say, goodness gracious, this guy is he's just toying with us. So yes, if that's the reason he does it, then whatever. As far as I'm concerned, he can even grip the sword with his mouth if that was the reason. But if it's not, if he's doing it because that's the way the Witcher fight, then it makes no sense because you, you're not gaining anything. A spin, a rotation, makes more sense than a reverse grip because with a spin you do gain momentum, you do gain power, it can confuse an enemy. There are some downsides, but if you have the dexterity of a Witcher, you don't care, nobody's gonna ma manage to pull that off and stab you in the back, it's just too quick for a human to do anything about that, to exploit the weaknesses of a pirouette wet and of course he's not gonna lose balance or anything he's a witcher but with the reverse grip what is he gaining really he's gaining nothing it just makes him look a bit more fantasy ninja like and uh, I personally don't like it I th I'd say just go for regular grip and spins that's already plenty no need for reverse grip anyways the combat apart from that is quite spectacular um, these guys are good the choreography is fun to watch they are quick paced of course they beat up and you can see sometimes it's a little fake sped up but you know I understand these choreographies can be dangerous. These are the main points I wanted to bring up today, uh, so mostly focusing on the battle and the fight scene in the market. But let me know, do you like this series? Have you enjoyed the first episode and would you like me to keep on talking, making videos about the other episodes? perhaps nitpicking or discussing things that I think could have been done better and also at the same time praising them for the things that I think they did very well. Well let me know in the comments below and remember the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.